and um, we have our, our series, uh, the Lord's Prayer, continuing, and today we have verse 12, okay, and it's just the first half of the verse. We're just going to focus on um, the first clause of the, of the verse, um, so Matthew 6, 12. And we'll read the entirety of the Lord's Prayer, and we'll come back to 12. Okay. Okay. Matthew 6. Um, verse 9, okay. Okay, pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay, we'll just stop there today. And um, we want to focus, we want to look at uh, verse 12. And it, it, it's, it's short, I know, but I, I just wanted to focus on the first part of the verse, which is, and forgive us um, our debts. Okay, and forgive us our debts. And God willing, next week we're going to talk about the second part, which is as we also have forgiven our debtors. Okay. And I think understanding, I, I wanted to break it down because I think understanding, getting the first part right, uh, it really makes a lot of sense okay, of the second part. Um, and they're, they're connected. And I think without um, really diving into the meaning of the first uh, part of this verse, I think it's, it's hard for us to uh, understand the second half, okay, to really, um, yeah, to really get it. And um, it says, and forgive us our debts, okay, and forgive us our debts. And my main point um, of my message today is, um, you know, this prayer, I mean, every verse is a, is a prayer, right, in the Lord's prayer, right? There are prayers within the Lord's Prayer, the best prayer that our Lord himself taught us. And, and this is the second petition, right? After, so after the th first three petitions which concern God, right? His glory, his name, right? His kingdom, his will, his preeminence. Um, we looked at, um, beginning uh, last week, the, the three petitions that concern us, our needs. Okay? And the first was uh, the bread, right? And we said that's um, talking about the physical needs that we have, uh, the immediate ne needs that we have as human beings. And um, it, it's a little bit of review and intro, but um, so the first one in the second half, it concerns our physical needs, okay? But the second and the third, um, they are our spiritual needs, okay? our spiritual needs. I mean, more specifically, um, verse 12, it concerns um, our moral and relational aspects of our spiritual needs. It's a spiritual need, but more specifically, our moral and relational aspects of our spiritual needs. And, and obviously, verse 13, um, that's our spiritual needs, uh, our need for protection, right? our, our need for, um, for, for strength, right? for courage. Uh, to, to fight and to overcome sin right, against Satan. And, um, you know, I, I want to look at verse 12 and the main uh, point. Um, you know, if you ask me a question, um, you know, like, you guys remember, I mean, this, I know, it's, it's a long time ago, but, um, you know, when I, when I first preached on the Lord's Prayer, I, I titled the message, uh, The Greatest Prayer. Actually, we were um, worshiping actually in the Changchun Chapel, the main building. 
And I, I, uh, I titled the message The Greatest Prayer Back Then because I believe that um, the greatest prayer obviously is, you know, the Lord's Prayer, right? It's, it's the prayer that Jesus gave us, that Jesus taught us. So it's obviously the greatest prayer. But within the, the, the greatest prayer that Jesus taught us, uh, I believe the greatest prayer, the greatest words uh, are contained in the first right, a verse, which was, uh, our Father in heaven, right? Our Father in heaven. But if you, if you ask me, you know, um, okay, then what's, what's the second most important part of the Lord's Prayer, right? The second best prayer within the Lord's Prayer, because these are all prayers. I would say it's uh, verse uh, 12, actually, uh, verse 12. And especially the first part, which says, and forgive us our debts, okay? and forgive us our debts. And I say this because I believe, and I, hopefully I'll explain it without taking too much time. I just have two main points, but I believe the, this, this prayer, right, asking for forgiveness. Father, right, we started with our Father in heaven, right, and we addressed, right, his preeminence, his glory. Then we get to our knees and we say, our Father in heaven, right, it's the same subject, we're, or we're praying to the same object, right, the same person. We're saying our Father in heaven, Forgive us our debts. Okay, forgive us our debts. And I think this is the greatest prayer, or maybe the second greatest prayer within the Lord's Prayer for us, because I believe it is the most liberating and, and satisfying prayer that we can pray for ourselves. Okay, it's the most liberating and satisfying prayer that we can pray. And the reason being, uh, I, I have two reasons for that. For that okay, two reasons for this prayer being the most liberating and satisfying prayer that we can pray. And, and I, I just have two key words. Um, this prayer contains, okay, this prayer, and forgive us our debts. It, it contains, um, number one, a restorative, okay, a restorative, like restoration, a restorative nature, okay. There's a restorative nature to this prayer. And number two, um, there's a, a declarative Okay, like declaration, you know, announce, uh, declarative nature to this prayer. And what I mean by that is, um, number one, you know, when I say restorative nature, I mean when we pray this prayer, okay, we're asking for restoration and deepening of our relationship with God, okay? When we pray this prayer, we are asking for what? Restoration and deepening of our relationship with God. Okay? It's about intimacy and fellowship. And number two, when I say declarative, okay, declarative, I'm, I'm going to come back to that, but I mean, when we pray this prayer, we are remembering, okay? We are remembering God's declaration of us as his sons and daughters. We're remembering God's declaration of us Okay, as his sons and daughters. Okay, so, you know, why do I say that this prayer has uh, a restorative nature, right? A restorative, um, you know, aspect or quality to it. It's because, you know, you have to ask a question, you know. I, I, I like to just kind of break it down, right, and think analytically. You know, when you say, when you see this verse, you know, um, so Jesus teaches us, uh, to pray to our Father in heaven, forgive us of our debts. Okay? Forgive us of our debts, which, by the way, means uh, sins. Okay? That's, that's, that's the language of the New Testament. If you are interested, you can look at the Luke's, you know, Luke, uh, Luke's version of the Lord's Prayer. And for the same word, Luke actually uses sins, forgive us our sins. Okay? So it's clear that it's talking about our sins, okay? our sins before God. And the thing is, you kind of have to wonder, okay, um, I thought we were already, uh, like, justified before God. And if you're not familiar with the word, you know, justification, right, uh, being justified, it, it simply means uh, being made right, being made right with God, right, being, having a right standing with God, being in favorable terms with God. Right? It's, it's having God not against us, but having God for us. Right? And, you know, 
if you you know if you've been to church, if you grew up as Christian, we know that you know we're taught or we're already justified, right? We're already justified. Um, so why do we have to ask for forgiveness? It's like always saying, God, like every time I sin, God, you know, would you justify me again? We, then we would have to pray this prayer every five seconds or three seconds, right? Because we know the Bible teaches us that even though that we have been justified in Christ, right, that we have our lingering, right, flesh, the sinful nature in us still working. And so we know that we still sin, right? So we're not asking for justification, right? When we pray this prayer, we're actually asking, um, well, before that, um, you know, why, why, does, uh, why does it, or I'll just give you the verse. You know, Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And there are so many other verses. So it's clear from the Bible that, you know, just, just basic teaching, right? Justification, is, it's, it's a once and for all event. At the moment of faith, when we believe in Jesus Christ, when we surrender our life to him, Right? Justification, it happens, okay, once and for all. So we're not just asking for justification here because that's, that part has already been taken care of. So what are we asking for then, you know, when we ask for forgiveness? And we're asking for a restoration of personal intimacy with God. Okay? We're asking for a restoration of personal intimacy with God. And the next question is, why, why do we need restoration? Okay? Why do we need restoration if we are already justified? Okay. Because, as Ephesians 4.30 says, our relationship with God can be hindered by sin. Okay? That's why. Our relationship with God can be hindered by sin. Okay? Ephesians 4.30, if you want to know, it, the verse says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, of God, by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Okay. So I think by this verse, I mean, it's not just this verse, but we know, right? I mean, it, it talks about being sealed, right? So we know that we are already saved. We have been justified. We have been saved, okay? The guilt of our sins has been washed away, right, by the blood of Christ. Um, so we know that, you know, justification is it's freely by God's grace because of the costly payment that Jesus paid for our sins. Okay? That's, that's the great exchange. And that's why we're sealed. But it clearly says, right, Ephesians 4.30 says that even though we are already sealed, we can grieve God. Right? We can grieve the Holy Spirit. And that's talking about our sin. Okay? That's talking about our disobedience. And, you know, just to quickly define sin, you know, if, what is sin? You know, how would you define sin if I, if I asked you? I'm, I'm, I won't call your na on your name today. But, you know, I know it's, it's a big concept. It can be abstract. Um, you know, sin uh, in biblical terms, especially, you know, if you go back to the Old Testament, um, you know, the word sin, actually, it means uh, missing the mark. You might, you might have heard of it, you know, missing the mark, okay? And it's really simple. Um, it's, it's missing God, okay? It's missing God. It, it's missing the heart and mind of God, missing his intents, okay? It's, it's unbelief, right? It's not believing what God says, right, according to his words. It's not living in conformity to his revealed will, right, in the Bible, okay? So we know what sin is by studying scriptures, actually, right? Because this is the w revealed will of God. Any part of our lives, right? Any part of our thinking, any part of our doing, any part of our feeling, okay? That's not in accordance with the word of God. That, that, that's sin, okay? And, and here... Um, I think the verse makes it clear that sin is what actually gets in the way, okay? Sin is what, what actually gets in the way in our relationship, in our fellowship with God, okay? And, and, and we already know, right? I mean, we're praying this as children of God, as sons and daughters. 
we're not we're not trying to pray this. It, I mean, this prayer is not for for non Christians, right? Jesus taught us, right? Teach. He taught us pray. Then like this, our Father, right? So we're praying this already as sons and daughters of God. So obviously, you know, sin breaks God's heart as our Father. It breaks His heart. And it, it drives us away from God, obviously, right? You know how that feels. It drives us away from God. It's not God, actually. We drive ourselves away from God because of our own shame and guilt. I would say, you know, an interesting way to put it is it actually creates a, a chasm, like a, like, a, like a gap or a wall of, of guilt, right? It's, it's a chasm of guilty conscience, right? So we, we're the ones who, God, I, you know, when we sin, like, I, I don't want to be near you. And I would also say it creates a distance between us and God, not because God doesn't love us and rejects us. That's not why. It's because simply God is holy. Okay? The Bible says that God is holy. Now, I want to read from 1 John 1, okay, verse 5 through 10. 1 John 1, 5 through 10. You know, you can, maybe you can just uh, look at it later. And it says, God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. Right? Darkness meaning sin. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, believers. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. But you have to be careful here. You have to notice that when it, when it talks about being cleansed from all sin, right, being cleansed from all unrighteousness, it, we're not talking about being cleansed through our obedience, right? We're not cleansed from all sin through our obedience, through our works, right? We know that the Bible clearly teaches that we're justified and cleansed from all sin by God's grace, right, through simple faith. Because of what Christ has done. That's what justification means. Okay? Yet from that point on, right, after our initial justification, okay, God also transforms us by his Holy Spirit. Yeah? God enables us to continue to repent and, and grow in holiness. He continues to enable us to confess our sins, ask for forgiveness, so when we acknowledge that we do still sin and we confess them freely as sons and daughters of God because we know we are already loved, right? We know that we are already right with God. We're justified. That's the motivation. And when we do confess our sins and, and, and we, we grow in holiness, it, it shows that we belong to the light, right? It, it shows that we belong to God who sanctifies us, right? Who by his spirit makes us more and more holy because he is holy. Okay. And this is what it means to ask for forgiveness, um, you know, as we see it in the Lord's Prayer. Okay. We have been called into the light, into God's light. Right? We have been called into obedience. We have been called into his holiness. Okay. And, and, you know, I don't want this to be a, a burden. Okay. I know I always try to hit on that point. But I think because there's such a strong tendency okay, um, in the church today and especially in our generation. Okay, um, you know, e everyone wants to talk about you know, you know, freedom, right? Everyone wants to talk about grace, and, and, and we should. But the thing is, I think if you, if you begin to undermine, right, if you begin to undermine God's word about the starting points, right? I mean, that's the premise of the Bible. The Bible says, I mean, we start as, as sinners, in need of God's grace, right? We start as people who are unworthy, but who, who have been made worthy because God himself gave us his own worth. So, you know, when we talk about the need to grow um, in, in obedience, in holiness, you know, I, I don't want that to be a, just a, an added work or burden because it's not. 
And, and I'm going to explain a little more, but, um, you know, the reason why this prayer um, that has to do with, you know, confessing our sins and growing in repentance and holiness, it's not a burden, but it's, it's actually what liberates us and satisfies us. And the reason is, you know, I mean, just think about it, right? It's, it's, not, it's not complicated. When, when God calls us into, into his light, right? It, 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 when God calls us into obedience, his holiness, um, into, into his presence, um, is, is that where we are miserable, right? In the presence of God, right? In intimacy with God. We all know from experience, right? When we actually... And sometimes, yes, obedience, con- you know, confession, um, and growing in holiness, sometimes it's hard. I know that. Sometimes you don't feel like doing it. But we all know, if you've been Christian enough, that when we uh, step into the light, right, when we step into obedience, when we finally say, okay, God, yes, I, I see that you love me. I-, I see that you want this for me, for my own goods. And, and-, and you-, you come into the light, right? You, you forsake your sins, right? You turn. Right? What do you experience? You realize that that's where your joy is found. Right? That's where your souls thrive. Right? That's, where we, that's where we experience that, okay, I see where I belong. This is what I was created for. Because that's where God dwells. Right? And we have been created to be intimate with God. And you know that... Um, that's the place, actually. Um, even though, you know, in life, I mean, I know how it is, right? I, it's the same flesh, right? And we seek a lot of things in life, okay? And, and not all, all those things are bad, okay? But I think, um, you know, sometimes it, it can be very misleading, right? Um, you know, we... Uh, there are a lot of things in life that we desire, and sometimes, you know, we, we're not sure, oh, is this okay? Is, is this in accordance with God's will? And, and yes, we, can, we should always, you know, ask that question. But I think a lot of times, um, you know, our heart's deepest longings, okay, our heart's deepest longings, um, we don't realize that, um, like, what we are seeking is actually God's, Yet we're trying to fill that void with something else. I mean, that's, a, that's what idol is, right? And, you know, idol doesn't have to be like a, a, a Buddha statue in front of me or like, you know, um, you know, praying to, I don't know, grandma gods and, and all these, uh, right? You know, um, I think a lot of times we are searching Okay? We're searching for our, our deepest longings to be fulfilled. But even without realizing, right, we're looking for that in the wrong places. And, you know, in order for us to have a deeper, okay, this unhindered intimacy with God, I mean, that's why Jesus teaches us to pray this way. Okay? And, and it's not just saying this prayer mechanically, obviously. It's about growing in reality of this prayer and living it out. We, we confess our sins and ask for forgiveness, even though we're already forgiven. Right? And I, I think that, that's kind of the, the beautiful irony here, right? The beauty of it. We're already forgiven, the Bible says, right? The, but doesn't the Bible say that we're already in Christ, right? United with him. In fact, it's, we ask for forgiveness because we are already forgiven, Okay, we ask for forgiveness because we're already forgiven. And, and why, why do I say that? You know, we ask for forgiveness because we understand what sin does to the heart of God. Okay? We mourn and turn from our sin because we see the heart of God. Right? We see that God wants this for, for our own good. You know, and... I think that's, that's what the Lord's Prayer really shows us. You know, the more you study the Lord's Prayer, you know, I, I said a few weeks ago that this prayer is not just instruction, right? It, this, this prayer is, is a promise. It's a guarantee. Right? It's God saying, you know, all the answers to your prayers when you pray this way, I have already prepared for you. I have already given you. Okay? And so, you know, we pray this prayer. We ask for forgiveness. We turn from our sin. 
We grow in holiness, not because we're trying to achieve something, not, not because we're trying to earn something, but because we see that God forgave us already. Right? He forgave us all of our sins long before we committed any, any one of them. Right? On the cross, the Bible says, while we were his sinners or his enemies. In fact, you know, we see that God forgave us, not just on the cross, right? but from before eternity passed. Right? When, when, when God decided to send his own son to die for us. And, you know, we see that in Scripture, um, even though there was nothing good in us, inherent within us, God gave us his own life and his worth, his righteousness, right? his beauty, his holiness. God gave us his plans. Right? God gave us his promises, his inheritance. Right? God gave us everything. So that's, that's the motivation, Okay, so how could we, the, the motivation is not, you know, this Lord's Prayer is not just like, oh, like I got to pray this way and it's just another, right, another mechanical thing. But in light of what God has done, right, the question is, how could we not, right, how could we not keep asking, right, for forgiveness? How, how could we not turn from our sins, right? How could we not grow in holiness, So, you know, I, I just want to ask you a question, you know, um, before I wrap up with just another point. Um, you know, my, my question for all of us is, um, what is it that really, um, what are we really seeking in our daily life? Right? What, what do we really seek in life? You know, um, just in our daily uh, routine, right? I mean, what... What is really on your mind and on your heart? What, what consumes your, your desires? Is it um, physical things? Right? Is, it, is it physical things, physical provisions, which are not bad? Right? But I think the, the problem is um, we, oftentimes we, we just stop there. Right? And God is not saying... Just like we looked at last week, you know, God is not saying, oh, don't ask for physical things, physical needs. You know, I'm too spiritual for you. You know, God, God is not like that. Right? God says, you know, I'm a, I'm a good father who provides the most basic needs first. I know that you have to eat. I know that you have to, you need other things in life. Right? God wants that more, more for, you know, for us than we want for ourselves. But I think when our prayers go only as far as our physical needs go and, and, and fall short. Right? I think that's where our, our joy stops growing. Right? Our joy often, you know, in my life too, when I don't seek, actively seek right, spiritual, my spiritual needs, right? my needs to be forgiven, my needs to be restored, my needs to be deepened in intimacy with God. Right? When, I, when I miss that, it, it's my joy that suffers. Do you understand? So, you know, I, I want to ask you that question. You know, what is your true sustenance in life? Right? Not just in some abstract way, but right, when you live your daily life, right, what do you live on? Okay, what do you live on? Is it like Jesus who says, my, my food, my sustenance is to do the will of my Father. That's really what sustains me. That's what really gives me joy. Okay, that's what really encourages me, right? Even though I have to bear the sins of the world, he was the most joyful man because his sustenance was to do the will of God, to have this unhindered intimacy with God, to live in holiness in obedience to the will of God. You know, and just, uh, you know, my second point, I said also in this prayer, there's a declarative aspect. Okay? There's a declarative nature um, to this prayer. And when we pray this prayer, we're remembering what? God's declaration of us as his sons and daughters. And, you know, like I said, you know, that clearly means sins, right? Sins uh, in this context. And um, it's actually kind of interesting because 
um, in the context, right, in the Greco-Roman world, I know that's like a funny word, Greco-Roman world, right, which just means it's, it's, it's the culture and the society, right, of, of the New Testament times, okay. There was actually something that was called a record of debt, okay, a record of debt. It was actually a, a written note, okay, a written note of various indebtedness, okay, various crimes, okay, various wrongs, so, for example, um, if there's a criminal who was sentenced to, to be crucified, right, um, you know, the judge or whoever, uh, they, they, would, they would post a notice on, on his cross that declares and describes his, his crimes, okay? And, you know, actually, Colossians 2.14, okay, Colossians 2.14, it, it speaks of our record of debt, okay, our record of debt. I'll just read it for you. Canceling the record of debt, okay? Canceling the record of debt that stood against us with his legal demands. This he, God, set aside, nailing it to the cross. Okay? He nailed this record of debt, our record of debt to the cross. Okay? And, and, and what does this mean? You know, nailing someone to the cross, as we all know, it, it meant just utter, right? Complete condemnation, right? Termination, um, destruction, obliteration. It means that Jesus was, was damned on the cross in our place to obliterate right, the power of sin over our lives. Right? He was condemned on the cross to obliterate right, the guilt of our sins. Right? He, obliterated, he actually obliterate, obliterated right, our, our, our shame and our failures, our ground for hopelessness. Right? It means that Jesus had a note of debt to his name, okay? Na nailed to the cross instead of ours, right? instead of our note of debt with our name on it. Because John 19, 19, actually, if you want to look at it later, you can, you can read. But John 19, 19, it speaks of Jesus actually having an inscription, you know, uh, Pilati. Okay, Pilate or Pilado, however you want to say it. You know, he's the one who actually ordered a, a note, a note of debt, okay? An inscription to be written or, I don't know, uh, chiseled on Jesus' cross. And it actually read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, John 19, 19. And we know that 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, right? The one who knew no sin became sin for us. And it's actually, it's actually very interesting how Paul is, is drawing, right? He's pulling all these word pictures together because at this time, when you said, uh, uh, you know, debt, right? A record of debt, people understood, right, what that meant, okay? So Jesus, the Son of God who had no sin, he actually became sin quite literally, right? His name was reduced to a crime, right? He was reduced to a note of debt, a note of sin, Right, that said, Jesus, right, in a mocking way, the king of the Jews. That, that's, that's, that was his note of debt on the cross. But, you know, we all know that that note of debt, right, it, 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 it should have been my name, right, our names written on it. Right? Instead of saying, Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews, it should have said, it should have read, Alex Lim, the king of sinners, it should have had your name on it. It should have had all of our countless sins, our most detestable sins that people don't even know about. Yeah, and, and that's really the gospel, right? Um, God took his own son and nailed him to the cross for us, and he gave him, his own son, a note of debt, a note of condemnation a note of crime with his name on it instead of ours so that our names will be erased from that note forever. So that our names will be erased from that note forever. So all of our indefensible, right, countless crime, criminal charges against the unapproachable holiness of God, they were, they were dropped at once. Right? They were dropped at once. That's really what happened on the cross. Our names were cleared because Jesus' own name was damned by his own father. Okay? We were pronounced free 
as sons and daughters of God because God's own son was denounced right, by his own father. So it, it's the same motivation, right? So how could we not pray, Father, forgive us of our sins. I, I'm sorry that, I, that in light of all that you've done, I, I, I still run from you. I still hide from you. I still compromise in my life. I still want to justify. But we know that you know, God's heart for us is, you know, he wants this unhindered intimacy. Right? He, he wants this unhindered, uncompromised purity and holiness in life, not because it makes us miserable, but because right, that's what gives us joy. Right, that's what gives us joy. So I just, I just want to, you know, um, just encourage all of us, um, you know, this prayer, um, as I've said from the beginning about the Lord's Prayer, it, it really, really reveals um, the heart of our Father, right, the heart of our Father. And, you know, he, He's not trying to make us feel guilty, right? Just, just feel more guilty. You know, you have to pray this way, ask for forgiveness as if he, is, he hasn't forgiven us. But we know that God has already forgiven us. He is already our Father. That's how we started, our Father in heaven. Thank you for being who you are. Let your will be done because it's perfect. And, and I know that you're going to take care of my needs. Give me my daily bread. I can ask without shame. And, but also, more importantly, I mean, isn't that why there are two prayers, two petitions for our spiritual needs and only one for physical bread? Yes, we start with our basic needs, with, with physical bread, but then we go on, right? And we ask, God, would you forgive me? Would you restore me? I know I, I, there's, there's more of this abundant life of intimacy with you. I know the compromises that I, that I make, that I, that I put off. But Father, would you, would you forgive me once again? I want to enter into your lights because I know that's where I belong. That's where I'm satisfied. And when we pray this prayer, we're saying, Father, thank you. I remember that you took my note of debt, my record of debt, my record of sin, and, and, you, and you put that on Jesus, and you nailed him to the cross for, for me. Right? That's, that's how you declared. Right? That's, that's, that was a declaration of the gospel. So I just pray that, you know, as we are, um, I know, I know, we, we have a lot of struggles, you know, and, um, you know, a lot of things, uh, it's even hard for you to talk about it, you know, in church, you know, even with your closest friends, sometimes even with your spouses. But, you know, I want to just encourage all of us that, you know, um, you know this, this, this is the way okay, to live. The Lord's Prayer. It, it, again, it's not just a prayer to recite okay, and pray mechanically and mindlessly. Right? But it's, it's a prayer to, to really meditate, and not, not just to meditate, but to, but to live out, right? to grow into. Okay, so let, let's, let's make this our own prayer, our own life. Father, forgive our, our debts. Okay, forgive our debts. Okay, let's pray. God, we thank you that... What you want for us, God, is, is better than what we often pursue, what we often believe will really satisfy us, God. God, when we long for physical things, our human needs, which are not bad, but when, when we just seek those things without really going deeper into the greater, the higher, the deeper needs of our, of our spirits, God, our spiritual needs, God, we, we miss the point of life, God. That's why most of the time, God, our, our joy is so conditional. Our, we, we lack the, the true deep joy that the Bible speaks of. Is because, God, we get stuck with, with just the physical bread. After asking and give us our daily needs, our, our physical breads, God, we, we stop there. 
But God, your heart and your encouragement for us is to, is to go on, God. You want us to, you want to deal with, with the deeper things in our hearts and in our lives. And sometimes it, it feels painful and shameful and it's not convenient to, to face the deeper things, God. To face our, our sins, God, our compromises. But thank you, Father, that, God, we're, we're not trying to gain favor with you, God. We're not trying to earn, God, your grace and your mercy, God. We, when we were still enemies, God, God, you died for us, Jesus. And that can be so... That can be such a cliche, God. We, we talk about it and we sing about it. But God, we know that oftentimes our lives, it, it, it's not worthy of the death that you died for us on the cross. God, we, we can be so, so nonchalant, God, so indifferent. We can be so just casual, God. We live, we just live on, God. And, and, and God, it's so easy, God, for us to just to be fixated, God, on our human needs, God. But the reality is what we're, le what we're really longing for, God, is not bread. And sometimes we don't even know that. We don't even know, God, what our true, deepest longings are, God. God, when we long for provisions, when we long for better jobs and better job situations, when we long for happy marriages and spouses, God, those things can be good, but God, that's not what we really long for, God. That's not the deepest longing, the cry of our hearts, God. What we're really longing for, through longing for those things, is, is you. And we thank you, Father, that, God, you have created us in such a way that the sustenance of our, the true sustenance, sustenance of our life, the true sustenance of our souls is not bread, God. It's not even our personal breakthroughs, God. Our sustenance, God, is to, is, is, is intimacy with you, God. Unhindered intimacy. Unhindered, uncompromised holiness, God. And we thank you, God, that you have made this intimacy, God. You have made your presence. You have made your light. You have made your holiness, God, our joy, our food, our sustenance. And that's what really satisfies us, God. That's the one non-negotiable quintessence, God. That's the essence of life, God. That's the most basic and important need that we have. And God, it's so foolish of us, God, so many times. We just go on, God, in our own lives. And, and, and we complain, I complain, and I wonder, God, why? My, my joy is, is, is shallow. Why I'm so still dissatisfied, God, is because, God, we, we're not receiving, God, the true sustenance of heaven, God, for our souls. So can we just pray right now that, yeah, that God would just open up our hearts, you know, whatever fear and doubt we have, um, you know, whatever hurts and disappointments, wh whatever that, whatever shame or guilt, and, and it can just really go back a long way in our lives, but let's just say, Father, what, whatever that gets in the way of, of me just, just opening up to you,
like a child with open arms, ready to be embraced, uh, asking to be embraced by his father. God, whatever it is in my heart, in my life, God, would you, uh, would you begin to move in my life? Would you begin to touch me so that I would, I would pray this prayer, God, daily, God, all the time? Because, because I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to be afraid. Repentance is, is the most joyful privilege of a son and a daughter of God. So let's just pray for that right now, that God would help us, whatever that is uh, hindering us, whatever that is getting in the way and pulling us away from truly praying this prayer and growing in holiness, in conformity to God's will. Let's just ask God to deal with those things in our lives right now. starting in my own heart, God, because you know, God, the excuses and the justifications and the compromises, God, of my own heart, God, and then I don't have to be afraid, God, and I don't have to feel like I need to hide, God, from you like Adam and Eve did, God, in the garden, God, because, God, you knew, God, God, you knew from the beginning, God, and you had a plan, God, you had it all figured out, God, so that your children, God, that we would be made your children first, God. Then, God, you ask us, you invite us into your holy presence, into your light, into a, a radical life of joy, God. Thank you, Father, God, that you are speaking, God, to all of us, God. We thank you, God, that you want this deep joy in our lives. You want this restoration and you want this declaration, God, to be, to be more real in our lives, God. You, we want it to be manif we want it to manifest God in deeper ways, in greater ways, God. As we pray and live this prayer, God. Father, our, my Father, our Father in heaven, forgive us our debts. Thank you, God, that we can do that with joy, Father. And let's also pray, just, just one more thing. Let's, let's also pray that, yeah, God would teach us the, the joy of, the joy of this prayer, the joy of asking for forgiveness freely as a son and daughter, the joy of being restored, the joy of going deeper in, in intimacy with him. The, the joy of realizing more deeply what Christ has done for us by dying for us on the cross. Let's just yeah, ask God to teach us the joy of it and for us, um, for, for us not to get caught up with, with our own um, struggles, with our own personal brokenness, that, that blind us from, from the joy of, of, of growing in repentance, in, in holiness, in being restored to God. So let's just pray for that right now. Teach us, Father, the joy of it. God, we thank you, God, that this joy, God, is it's just like what you said, Jesus. You said, I, 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 my peace I give to you, and I don't give as the world gives. And it was an eternal joy, God. It was an unshakable joy of knowing, God, that you have accepted us, God, that you have committed yourself, God, to us as our Father. God, we thank you, God, that you want this, God. And, God, we don't have to, God, try to work this up, God, as if, God, we're trying, God, to force something in, God. We thank you, God, that's you want, God, you want, you want the deeper things, God. 
even though, God, our hearts are, are pulled away, God, are drawn to, God, so many shallow things in life, God. We thank you, God, that you, you desire that which is best, God, for our souls. Thank you, God, that you, God, are working in our lives, God, and we don't have to wonder, God. And that's why, Jesus, you came and you died on the cross, God. God, it revealed, God, that the decisive nature, God, of your commitment, God, to us, God, we don't have to wonder, God, that you have the best, God, for us. Father, thank you that, God, you have given us the privilege, God, of praying this prayer as your sons and daughters who are already gods, who have been justified, who have been made right with gods, who have gained all the favor of the Father, God. God, we thank you, God, that, that it is our joy and our privilege. And we thank you, God, that the secret to the abundant life, a secret to deep joy, unshakable joy, is not conditional, God, is not found somewhere distant, God is not found through impossible means, God, but it's right here. God, in, instead of focusing on, on all that we think we're lacking, God, all the things that make us unhappy and frustrated, God, instead of seeing those things, God, all we have to do, God, is, is, is pray for our needs, Honestly, God, and simply. And after asking for physical bread, God, all we have to do is, is pray. Father, would you, would you forgive me? God, I, I don't want to live. I don't want to just stay where I am. And we thank you, Father, that it is your kindness that leads us, God, to repentance. God, it is your grace and your mercy already granted, God. It is, it is our status of having become already the sons and daughters of God, God, that, that drive us, that motivate us, God, to pray this way, God, to grow and, and live out, God, the reality of this prayer, God, the restorative and the declarative, God. We thank you, God, for this prayer. We just thank you. We continue to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.